bigger inside, lighter, of higher quality, more spacious and more aerodynamic, today's Subaru Impreza has definitely progressed. It just doesn't look like an Impreza anymore. The car's enthusiast following may find it hard to adjust to this, but beneath the new generation car's more generic family hat shape lie the same all-wheel drive mechanicals and high-spec chassis that made the Impreza great. Buyers can choose sedate, normally aspirated engines or a headbanger turbo unit according to taste. Some cars appeal to a very definite market, a section of the populace that instantly gets what that particular vehicle is all about. The Subaru Impreza is just one such car. Over the years, the rally replica Subaru has built up a committed cult following in the UK. But with the latest generation version, the Japanese manufacturer has shown us a pronounced desire to tame the hooligan, to make the car appeal to a more mainstream, middle-class audience. Now today's Subaru Impreza may have been developed to better appeal to Mr and Mrs Average, but even in entry-level models, the car's basic recipe remains anything but mainstream. When was the last time you saw all-wheel drive transmission and a low-range gearbox in a Focus or an Astra? Exactly. Now more differences come with the type of engines being used. Subaru's favoured horizontally opposed boxer engine layout is used across the range, which accounts for the rather unusual but rather endearing engine note that the Impreza has. It produces a low centre of gravity in the car, helping the latest Impreza retain its high levels of steering accuracy and grip while minimising body roll. Under normal conditions, drive is split 50-50 between the front and rear axles, or 60-40 or if you're driving the automatic. But the centre differential has a viscous coupling that diverts torque to the axle with the most grip to reduce wheel spin. So next time there's a cold snap, you'll be glad that you didn't opt for something run of the mill. The sporty STI version that I'm driving here, like the WRX, as a mechanical limited slip differential between the rear wheels. Today's Impreza is only offered as a conventional five door hatch. Still, it's bigger inside than previous generation models and a more compact suspension design has meant that there's more boot space here too with 538 litres on offer. Inside, the interior is a big step forward. The tough plastics and stayed design of older Imprezas has finally been axed in favour of the superior to quality materials and more modern layout of this latest generation car. Now the STI flagship version we're looking at here of course looks a fair bit more aggressive than its standard stable mates, with the addition of these heavily blistered wheel arches that push the front wheels out by 45mm and the rear ones out by 40mm. Now these side skirts have the give the impression of visually lowering the car while a high mounted roof spoiler and quad exhaust pipes at the back leave those who've been overtaken in no doubt as to just what's blown by. Prices for the mainstream 1.5 and 2 litre petrol models sit in the expected 13 to 18,000 pound bracket common to this class of family hatchback, while the sporting WRX and STI models cost between 20 and 25,000 pounds. Engine-wise, a 1.5-litre petrol engine with 106 brake horsepower opens the proceedings, slotting in just below a 2-litre petrol engine with 148 brake horsepower. Now, these are modern enough units, but with 0-60 sprint times of 13.7 and 9.2 seconds respectively, perhaps they don't deliver quite the acceleration we've come to expect from Impreza's over the years. Now for that kind of shove, you'll need the 227 brake horsepower, 2.5 litre engine you'll find under the bonnet of the WRX. Or better still, order it in STI form, in 295 brake horsepower guys. I couldn't help opt opting for that, it delivers 0-60 in 4.8 seconds on the way to a top speed of 155 miles an hour. Family hatchback buyers bent on achieving ultimate fuel economy tend to pick diesel engines, but that's not an option as far as the Subaru Impreza is concerned. Instead, the modern non-turbocharged petrol units deliver average fuel economy, while the WRX and STI performance versions deliver the kind of economy you'd expect from a top-end performance hatchback. 37.7 mpg is the stated average for the 1.5 litre car, 
Well, the 2-litre model does 33.6, and the 2.5-litre turbo engine in the WRX manages 27.2 mpg. In terms of CO2 emissions, the WRX does 246 grams per kilometre, uh, the 2-litre does 194 grams per kilometre, and the 1.4176 grams per kilometre. Insurance groups, well, they range between 4 and 8 for the mainstream models and 18 and 19 for the performance-orientated WRX or STI. Subaru hasn't been afraid to change a highly successful and very popular formula in creating this new Impreza. The emphasis has switched from hardcore rally replicas to affordable family hatchbacks, opening up a new market ready to value the Subaru's all-wheel drive underpinnings, generous specification and attractive pricing. And the enthusiasts who traditionally bought Imprezas, well, initially they were wary, but they shouldn't be. Beneath the unassuming exterior, this is still a real driver-focused car with a properly high-spec chassis and 4x4 system. In top WRX and STI guises, it's still a car that makes you feel like a rally legend with a heart derived from motorsport. Thank goodness for that.